here. Hi, everyone. My name is Griselda Cuevas, and I am a product manager for Google Cloud. And today I'm going to be talking about Apache Beam in the data analytics lifecycle. Let's get started. So the first, I want to set the stage by sharing some data industry trends. So let's talk about what is happening now. So happening now, a lot of companies are still migrating to the cloud, but more and more in things like COVID-19 and businesses going online have sparked that even more. The cost reduction of storage and processing services, as well as a growing ecosystem of point solutions and open source technology have motivated more companies to keep doing this move to the cloud. A second trend that is happening now is that we are having access to massive amounts of raw data. So more users online are doing more things and are doing things from shopping to consumer to consuming entertainment. And this is what it's creating all this gold mine of data. This enables companies to store it, to store this data mostly in a raw stage. But even when this is great, new challenges derive from this. What are you going to do with this? The third trend is the emerging of new regulations. As we mentioned, the more things users do online, the need to protect their privacy and to only use the right data to create experiences that cater for them is uh, a, uh, a need that a lot of companies need to, to fulfill. The fourth trend is the need to reduce time to inside. To the point that I was covering early on, once we have raw data, businesses have now all this valuable information that they need to use to create responsive business, smart operations, and even more effective response to these data and, and insights that we can derive from that. So these four trends are happening right now. In the next few years, we're going to see the following, uh, the following trends and initiatives deriving from them. The first one is the data reliability. As we mentioned, as more businesses move to the cloud, data silos are created. Some data is on premises, some data is already in the cloud. The fact that we have point solutions to solve very specific use case, for example, storing data in caches or having data in different type of databases, create these data silos. So this is a challenge that a lot of companies are going to start having and we need to find solutions for. The next trend is real-time analytics. So as we mentioned earlier, one of the needs and, tr and trends that companies want to have is to reduce the time that data to insights um, production. So as everyone mentioned, as more companies move to the cloud and have this access to this amount of data, this opportunity to create real-time analytics then becomes a reality. The third trend is that governed data needs to be democratized. So as new regulations come in action, it's very important that companies give the, the right level of access to different data sources to the right teams. Business analysts that need to get access to information from users need to be controlled so, they stay com so companies stay compliant to these new regulations. And lastly, as more data in, uh, as more data is used to create us more businesses, there needs to be solutions to help AI and ML to get operationalized and to get into production more effectively. So these are trends that are happening in the data industry. And now I'm going to talk to you about how these data trends can be achieved through data analytics and where Apache Beam sits in that life cycle. So the data analytics, what is data analytics and data processing? So let me walk you through that. So data analytics, the data analytics life cycle comprises the entire cycle from data collection, processing, storage, usage, and control. So data collection is pretty much what we were talking about, that capturing of all the data, the raw data that comes from, from operations and users online. Processing is that transformation of that raw data into insight and valuable information that businesses can, uh, can have to act on, on it. A storage of data is the storage of that transformed data into valuable information and, and insights. The usage of it is how businesses decide to react to these new insights and valuable information created from it. 
And lastly, control means two things. Quality control, making sure the data stays reliable and usable, but also that the right people get access to it. So just to summarize, data analytics is the overarching practice that encompasses the entire set cycle of it. And then data processing is this point where we read the data from this, the space we are collecting it and we produce the new insights and valuable information. Here is where Apache Beam comes into the into the picture. Data processing is done in three phases. So that, that orange um, part of the data analytics lifecycle, which is the transformation of data, happens in these three cycles. So first is data ingestion. Then we get the processing or the transformation from raw data into valuable insights. And then we write it. We store it into, that, uh, into the insights and, and information that we want to act on. So there are also two types of data processing. So the first is batch is batch processing. What happens where what happens is like data is collected and then it's processed after one of two things happen. Either after a time period is completed or an or a given amount of data is collected. So this processing happens in chunks and after one of these two conditions is is achieved. And then we have a streaming processing or real-time processing, which is the continued processing of raw data that aims to derive insights immediately after the data is collected. And some examples of each of them for batch processing, things like, okay, let's do payroll or preventing manufacturing, or even the, the consolidation of activity to build a user at the end of the month or, or a cycle. Those are examples of batch processing. Now, examples of streaming processing, we have like experience personalization in how businesses want to improve the experience that their users have online based on previous activity. Then we also have things like anomaly detection or malfunctioning alerting systems for streaming uh, processing. Okay, so where does Apache Beam fit in all of this? Let me first talk to you about a common misconception. Often we have heard that Apache Beam is a substitute for Apache Spark of Apache Flink, and a lot of the users try to make sense of like whether to use one or the other. But this is a misconception. The truth is that, as Aaron mentioned, is that Apache Beam is a programming model to build and define batch or and streaming data processing pipelines. So Apache Beam actually helps you achieve the three process of data processing which is ingestion, processing, and writing. And through the other sessions that we're going to be having today, you're going to learn what are the concepts, the nitty gritty of how to implement Apache Beam pipelines and how to build the logic to solve your business case. So building Apache Beam pipelines requires three steps. And this is going to give you a, a bit uh, of an overview of what is Apache Beam's value proposition. The first step is that Apache Beam pipelines are portable, right? So you can change only one line of code and you can run Beam pipelines in any supported runner. This includes Apache Spark, Apache Flink, or Google Dataflow. So this is where I would like to tie back to the first misconception that I mentioned. Apache Beam is not a substitute for Apache Spark or Apache Flink. If you develop your, your pipelines using Apache Beam, you can actually run them using Apache Spark or Apache Flink. The second step to when you are building your data pipelines with Apache Beam is actually choose your language. Apache Beam is a multi-language a programming model that can that can help you write your pipelines using your favorite language. Right now, we support Java, Scala, Python, SQL, and Go. And as everyone mentioned earlier, companies can feel uh, empowered to build their own SDKs, their own connectors, and their own transformations to keep extending the uh, ecosystem of solutions with Apache Beam. The third step is use any of our IEL connectors or transformations to build your business logic and take advantage of all the raw data that you are collecting and create a smart business and insights that you can use to, to grow your, your value proposition. 
So in terms of IO connectors, we have a set of ecosystems that can, write, that can read and write data from different sources, including file systems, message, messaging services, databases, caches, and other sources to, to read and write. And in terms of transformation, there is uh, an ecosystem of already built-in P-transforms, and you will learn what is a P-transform later on the our sessions today. And these transformations include things like group by key, co-group by key, combining data from different sources, flattened data sources, etc. All right, so just to recap, I want to cover some of the key points of the value proposition of Apache Beam. So Apache Beam is a unified model that can help you write data pipelines for either batch or streaming processing. Just by changing a single line of code, you can, ru you can run your data pipelines in any of our supported runners. So if you decide to move from one service to another, you can simply do it by changing one line of code. No more rewriting your entire, your entire data processing architecture. The third part is that you can code in any of our supported languages. So if some of your teams are more comfortable with SQL, Python, or Java, it doesn't matter. Apache Beam can be written in any of those languages. The fourth point is that we have a large collection of IEO connectors and operators, also known as P-Transform, that can help you build data, pro data processing pipelines to satisfy your use case and business logic. And lastly, in case that this ecosystem doesn't have what you need to solve your business case, you can easily create your own because the, the technology is extensible and we have an open source community to help you do that. So with this, I want to give you an overview of what is coming up today in terms of content. So in today's module, you're gonna learn what is Apache Beam in action. Actually, after me, we're gonna have two uh, presentations of people who have used Apache Beam to solve real, real life use cases. After that, we're gonna have an overview of Apache Beam of the key concepts. Then we're going to see how to define a direct, directed acyclic graph for data processing. And we're going to have an overview of the architecture of a specific runner, Dataflow. And after that, we're going to have a demo using Python to put all the concepts that you learned today in practice. So with this, I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to say thank you.